Hey everyone, Corbett Maxi here. I'm a biologist, I'm a wildlife expert, and host of the Animals to the Max podcast. And today, we're gonna talk about the coronavirus. Everyone is freaking out! Okay, don't freak out. I'm gonna go over all the facts. There's a lot of rumors out there. So, you know, for instance, the coronavirus has nothing to do with the beer. No, it doesn't have to do with the beer. So, we're gonna talk about the facts. We're gonna talk about what a coronavirus is, the difference between COVID-19 and the coronavirus because there is actually a difference. We're gonna talk about where it started. We're gonna talk about the symptoms. We're gonna talk about what's being done. Is there a cure? We're gonna go over all the facts. Check it out. Well, let's start with it. What is a virus? A virus is a biological microscopic organism that reproduces inside the cells <laughs> of the living host. So, I hate these rice -a So, I mean, they're delicious, but for this, it doesn't work. When a virus enters our bodies, it makes our cells replicate the virus at a rapid rate. That's why viruses spread so fast. So the coronavirus is a name for, <laughs> I hate these rice So coronaviruses are a group of viruses and they're found all around the world and they're common in animals. So why is it called a coronavirus? Well, if you take a look at it, under the microscope, you'll see that the virus has like spikes or crowns. Hence the name coronavirus or corona means crown in Latin. Well, I think so anyway. So what is the difference between the coronavirus and COVID-19? Well, COVID-19 is actually the disease caused by this new coronavirus. Now, if you're wondering, okay, let's break down. Why is it called COVID-19? All right, so the CO, the CO stands for Corona, VI stands for virus, the D stands for disease, and 19 stands for the year it was first discovered. I'm gonna change my shirt because I really don't wanna get sued by Corona. Here we go. Scientists believe COVID-19 started in a wildlife market in Wuhan, China. It's a southeastern part of China. Now, if you're thinking a wildlife market, that sounds like a magical place. It's not. Wildlife markets are a place where they sell live animals like snakes for food. It happens all across Southeast Asia. The unfortunate thing is that many of the animals are illegally taken from the wild, so they're poached and they're put in these markets in horrific conditions. They're crammed in tiny steel enclosures, usually without any water. They go to the bathroom over themselves, other animals. Cages are stacked upon each other in these wild markets. It's a really, really disgusting, unsanitary place. Now, I'm a Westerner, so it's easy for me to look at these markets and be like, oh, that's so gross. I don't like them. I don't like how the animals are treated. I think it's inhumane, but I understand they've been doing this for hundreds of years. But what happens when you have all these animals crammed together? So in Wuhan, China, in this, in, in this exact market, in Wuhan, China, they found red foxes, wolf pups, crocodiles, snakes, uh, turtles, frogs, uh, birds, all these animals just for food. What happens is you get this cesspool of bacteria and it's a breeding ground for new viruses. That's how COVID-19 started. Now scientists first thought that maybe snakes could carry COVID-19, then they thought bats could carry it. Yes, people eat bats, but it turns out the real culprit, scientists believe, were pangolins. Now what's a pangolin? Pangolins are scaly anteaters. They're not technically an anteater, but a lot of people call them anteaters, and they are the only mammal covered in scales. Now, Unfortunately, pangolins are disappearing at a rapid rate. They're actually the most trafficked animal in the world. There's eight species and they're all either in danger or threatened. Now in Asian cultures, a lot of people will eat the scales uh, because they think there's some medicinal value. It could cure a variety of things from menstrual pains to uh, aphrodisiacs, yeah, it doesn't work, guys. Uh, there's no scientific proof. And so unfortunately, these animals are poached. Also, people eat exotic animals. Um, in Asia, in parts of Asia, it is a delicacy, and the rich eat these endangered animals. I think it's disgusting, but there's people out there that like to show their sense of power by eating exotic animals that are in danger. I do not agree with it. Now, COVID-19 started because of things like wildlife markets. Some animals are farmed like water turtles, like my friend Seymour, the red-eared slider. Don't worry, he's not food. He's my pet. I love him very dearly. Unfortunately, the Chinese believe that live animals, well, they taste better. Um, so they go for two to three times more. Now the live animals are butchered 
in these markets and it's inhumane. Usually the knife that these animals are... Now, a lot of diseases occur in wildlife markets. They're called zoonotic diseases. Those are diseases passed from animals to humans. Now, the Chinese government put a temporary ban in January, late January, to uh, basically ban the trade of live wild animals for food. They put that temporary ban, and then February 24th, they actually put a permanent ban on selling wild animals for food in China. This is really gonna help endangered species, especially those who are traded for um, consumption in these markets. It's really gonna help them because people are realizing like, hey, I'm um, this is dangerous eating these animals, especially eating them and getting them from these unsanitary conditions. I also want to say that tens and tens of millions of these animals are traded for food around the world. A lot of it is not sustainable and a lot of these animals, especially our endangered species, we are losing them at a rapid rate. This seriously needs to stop because this is now a global crisis. This is a health emergency all around the world. People are bunkering down. Uh, COVID-19 is everywhere. There is well over 130,000 cases in over 123 countries and the number keeps on climbing. We have to put a halt to this, you guys. We really, really do because look what happened. Okay, so now let's go over the coronavirus, COVID-19. Let's talk about the symptoms. <laughs> ah! <laughs> I don't even care. Okay, COVID-19 is a respiratory infection. It's a respiratory disease. It first attacks your lungs and then it spreads throughout the body. Symptoms of this include a fever, includes a cough, sneeze, kind of similar symptoms to the common cold, but it's a lot worse. So COVID-19 causes pneumonia-like symptoms and it's really... Re it's really hard for people who have high blood pressure, like I do during this filming. Uh, also, people who have other underlining issues, such as cardiovascular disease. It really does affect the elderly, but we're seeing cases in people even younger, even into their 40s and their 50s. Now, I don't, you know, a lot of people are freaking out. A lot of people are like, oh my gosh, what's going to happen? The world's taking over. You need to calm down. It's okay. Take a breath. There's preventive measures you can do. One, wash your hands. Now, wash them good up to 20 seconds. That's what Dr. Oz says, and Dr. Oz is just awesome. So wash your hands. Also, avoid large crowds, public contact. Stay three to four feet away from people. You know, and also just sanitize your house. Be smart about it. Now, if you do have the coronavirus, it's okay, the world is not going to end. Most people who have the coronavirus, first they'll start seeing symptoms within two to 14 days after being in contact with the virus. Most people have mild conditions and the majority, over half of the people have recovered. Now this information is coming from the World Health Organization and also my sources at the National Geographic. So I'm not just talking out of my rear, this is true fact. So more than half the people recover from the coronavirus. Is there a cure? Honestly, there's not a cure right now. Matter of fact, our best cure is our natural immune system. There is not a vaccine for the coronavirus. As a matter of fact, the New York Times is reporting that we are several months to even a few years away from a vaccine for the coronavirus. But once again, all you guys have to do is make sure you stay sanitary, wash your hands, avoid large crowds, kind of keep it chill for uh, the next few weeks until we figure out this global pandemic. Now, I hope you enjoyed this video, uh, learning more about the coronavirus. If you do want to learn more, I encourage you to check out my podcast, Animals to the Max. You can listen to it for free. It's available on iTunes, Spotify, Pandora, which is awesome. We just got on Pandora. You can also check it out at CorbinMaxi.com if you want to learn more. Like I said, there's over 100 episodes, uh, and we just talk about animals, and I usually feature animals and someone who works with them in an animal-related field. So thank you so much for watching this video. If you haven't already, please make sure to follow me on my Instagram at Corbin Maxi, Facebook, Twitter, and if you want to, subscribe to the podcast. Thank you so much for watching. Stay safe, everybody.